Hey there everybody, welcome to Tuck Tuck's Trinkets and Terrain. Uh, I have never built a dice tower before, so I wanted to give that a shot, uh, but I wanted mine to double as a piece of terrain that I can use on the table. Um, and I landed on a volcano. Um, I don't have one, so I thought it'd be a nice, cool sort of feature piece to use uh, when the situation arises. Um, I ran into a few hiccups with this project, uh, mainly that I left it outside to dry and it rained. Um, so I think I did a pretty good job pushing it all back together, uh, given the extra moisture, but uh, I'm gonna show you what I did and how I did it, and I hope you enjoy. To start things off, I glued together a bunch of XPS foam into um, just a big brick, basically, and then used my hot wire tool to start shaping uh, the volcano into the sort of stereotypical cone shape that you always think of. Uh, and after trimming it down to a size that I liked, uh, I bored a hole in the middle here and then glued in a ramp sort of at the bottom to facilitate the dice being thrown in. And then just to make it smooth going down since the hole was kind of rough, um, this is just a piece of just a cardboard tube that I cut the length um, that'll get glued into the main slot there. I cut out a base of some more foam. Um, for the sort of dice tray part that sits out of the front at the bottom of the tower. Um, and then using a knife and a little bit of heat, I bored out a hole. And then once that was done, I just glued both pieces together to make the general structure of the whole tower. And then to make the dice tray part flat, I cut out a piece of just cereal box and glued that into place to try and make uh, as flat of a surface as possible so that the dice don't get you know cocked or anything uh, once they're done rolling. And then to add texture and bulk out and make the more detailed shapes, uh, I mixed up the rest of my sculpt -the mold that I had purchased for my Gaslands table and then just basically slopped that all over the entire project, trying to make it as thin as I can um, to cut down on weight as well as dry time. And then once that was all dry, I had noticed that I had missed a few spots. Um, so I grabbed my air dry clay and just threw that onto those spots, um, doing my best to meld the two materials together. I also threw a couple random pieces um, just over the piece in general so that the clay near the bottom didn't stand out too much. And then I just textured the clay with some aluminum foil to give it a more rocky appearance, closer to that of the sculpt -the mold now once all that was relatively dry, I base coated it with some black spray paint, um, but this is where I made my mistake and left it outside too long uh, and it rained. Um, so most of the clay got pretty wet and gross. A lot of the sculpt mold ended up um, sort of coming off as well. I managed to put everything back together uh, for the most part, but I was kind of running out of time to get the video done. Uh, so a lot of this is still wet as I'm painting it. Uh, I did a, just a heavy base coat of a brown paint. For the clay parts, uh, I painted those gray uh, since it was a different texture and material. I figured I might as well lean into that more and just paint those a different color. Once all that was dry, I did a pretty heavy dry brush with a light gray. Uh, and then I went back and did another dry brush with a sort of a tan yellow color, focusing mostly on the gray parts. And then after a pretty heavy black wash, I did one final dry brush with a sort of linen off-white color uh, to make sure all the nice texture from the sculpt mold really stood out. I then went in with a bright red and painted the inside of the dice tower as much as I could. Um, and then near the top here, I wanted to give that sort of lava glow. Um, so I did a pretty heavy dry brush with a red followed by an orange and then finally a yellow uh, to give it that nice lava glow. Now, one of the issues I had with the rain is that the cardboard that I used for the dice tray part ended up sagging and warping. So in an attempt to not have to tear that all out and redo it, I mixed up a batch of white glue and uh, baking soda to create a lava, basically. Uh, my idea here was that it's liquid, so it'll be nice and level once it dries. So after pouring that in, I thought it would be cool to add a lava flow uh, near the top as well. But for this, I mixed in some sand and small pebbles to thicken it up uh, and give it an extra texture as well. And then once that was dry, it ended up looking really cool. Um, the tray itself was less successful. It dried uh, pretty rough and not perfectly smooth, but it's serviceable, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but I painted up both the 
tray part as well as the flow near the top with some reds, oranges, and yellows to give it a lava look, just sort of mixing the colors together. Now for the last couple of details, I wanted to add some flocking uh, around the volcano here. So just using this mixture of greens and a sort of a dead grass straw one. Um, I focused the green more on near the bottom and then the tan uh, closer to the top. Uh, I did a little dry brush of some red around the lava to give it that red glow. Um, and then I went over some of the uh, dead grass areas with a dry brush of brown, focusing more on the ones near the lava to give them a more dead look. Uh, and this is the final result. Uh, it's definitely pretty rough around the edges. Um, and I'm going to blame the issues that I had during the process here. Uh, but it looks good on the table. It definitely reads as a volcano, which can't really complain too much. Um, I'm, I'm really, really happy with the lava flow near the top here. I think that turned out really cool. Uh, so you can see it's pretty hit or miss with the dice here. Uh, like I said, I'm planning on going back and fixing that at some point, but for now it works, I'd say like 60% of the time. They get just far out enough that you can read them. If you did like the video, make sure to hit the subscribe and the like buttons. I really would appreciate it. I have an Instagram account that you can check out where I post in progress pictures and other things that I've got going on, as well as an Etsy shop where you can pick up dungeon tiles and other terrain accessories to use in your tabletop games. But more than anything, thank you so much for stopping by. We'll see you next time.